banner of one review with a mighty tread they swing along now i see white From the earliest history of armed conflict, surviving soldiers have done their duty and returned to their homes and families. In the aftermath of World War I, millions of servicemen and women came home from an unprecedented war. For some, the war's impact on their bodies and minds lasted a lifetime. Nonetheless, our men and women were coming home. Parades were organized to honor the troops who had served in the war. Servicemen and women were given a hero's welcome. All across the earthly plain, Populations took to the streets in celebration. Old friends and families were reunited. Communities and commerce thrived. But behind the scenes, all was not well. Individuals began reporting illness and scientists confirmed the troops had brought home tainted bacon. Hospitals were quickly overrun with the sick and dying. The waiting line was moved outside the American Legion turned their game room into a makeshift hospital. Women began moving men on stretchers. Supervisors did not need to take precautions. To be safe, men were kept in confined areas without precautions. Conditions inside the camps pushed individuals to their limits. It was written all over their faces. They were even asked to sleep under the stars next to an old world structure. Putting the sick in one large confined space with limited precautions was the best defense. Sleeping head to toe in a hallway was an important measure. If the men were laying down outside, precautions were optional. Judges stood to monitor the contestants in the Stay in Bed the Longest contest. Thankfully, the supervisor stayed healthy and didn't need to take precautions. It was important to wear matching clothes, sit close together, and take in program information. During this time period, individuals passed away and were put in pine boxes. The deceased were wrapped like sausages and laid to rest on the ground. Getting your picture taken was worth the risk, as long as the group was large and in tight formation. Doctors needed armed guards to protect them from the growing threat. Soldiers were even forced to march in the rain while taking precautions. Great care was taken to remain safe while handling the camp garbage. Hospital staff had to walk through the muddy ditches to get to work. Scientists were busy working on a solution to the threat. Individuals lined up at their doctor's offices. 
The pine box manufacturing industry delivered their products on trucks. Strange entities wore athletic protectors on their faces. Precautions varied in their shapes and sizes. Mouth breathing was a common practice. Families even had their photographs taken with their pets, while all took precautions. Photographers were allowed close proximity access during sporting events. Precautions were sprayed into the air in the middle of the street. Seats on buses were targeted as threats. Streetcar attendants checked the riders for proper precautions. Women carried sleeping men to trucks with supervisors. Then they waited in formation for their photo opportunity. Nurses rolled cigarettes for their patients. Soldiers even had to practice personal hygiene every day. Individuals were encouraged to keep their saliva in their mouths. Extreme measures were implemented. One was sleeping with your windows open. Even the postal carrier took precautions. The police took precautions while standing in groups on street corners. Men smoking pipes were targeted by security during photo opportunities. Public shaming was instituted to help their program. Fashion tips were given by the unfashionable. If one was unsure about their precaution, assistance was close by. Winter socks were converted into acceptable precautions. No, I told you before, no precautions, no ride. Sanitation workers wore white as a precaution. Nose breathers had casual conversations. Photo opportunities were valuable programming. Twins wore signs and diapers on their faces for the cause. Printed signs were made so individuals would read them. They found it was necessary to isolate infants and protect them with signs. Citrus was used as a precaution. Children without precautions were given soup. Children were given baggy white shirts for their photo opportunities. Some poor individuals thought precautions were bad for their health. Signs were made for the people to read. Tempers flared when individuals followed the words on the signs. If you were a supervisor standing on the sidewalk, you didn't need to take precautions. White burkas were in fashion during this photo opportunity. Individuals stood close together in lines to get their precautions. Sitting in the barber chair was a respectable place to sit during a photo opportunity. Barber chairs were in high demand. Phone operators required precautions from callers. Nurses worked on crafts in their spare time. Reading individuals' emotions was possible during photo opportunities. Supervisors were there to assist the troops. Devices were built during this time. 
and individuals use them during their photo opportunities. The reality of the situation was written all over the faces of those on the front line. Individuals were randomly picked for photographs that captured their emotions. How were they going to win this battle? What were they going to do? A plan was made. What was the answer? Declare victory! We won! It's over! Individuals survived and they could now return home. The camps had kept people in large groups. Commerce was re-established after the shutdown. Elders guided the population. Self-sufficiency was encouraged. Communities celebrated going home by gathering in large groups. Buildings needed to be safely constructed. Individuals celebrated in old world cities. Photographs were taken from high vantage points. Individuals praised their creator outside. Hot dogs were eaten outside old world structures. Going to your local obelisk for photo ops was encouraged. Interacting with functioning Antiquitech was also encouraged. The world was reopened and the population prepared for the stock market crash, prohibition, and World War II. Saying, should you not receive it, right and let me know. If I make mistakes in spelling, Molly dear, said he, remember it's a pen that's bad, don't lay the blame on me. It's a long way to Tipperary, it's a long way to go. It's a long way to Tipperary, 